Oh, hello. I'm back again for the final playthrough of the Young Indiana Jones uh, video game series. We'll call it that. Uh, and I've already have posted all the other playthroughs. This is the final one. It's the Young. It's the Adventures of Young Indiana Jones: colon, Hunting for Treasure. That's this final PC game that got released based on uh, specifically the Young Indiana Jones TV series, which is is a subset of the Indiana Jones games. Um, and I, I didn't do all of them because there's too many, but I did focus on Young Indiana Jones. So at this stage, there was a NES game and there was a Sega Genesis game. Uh, those were released at the time the TV series was on the air. And then over a decade later, Lucasfilm released the DVD set trilogy you see up there. Uh, and each one of those T DVD sets had a bonus disc that included an installable PC game. So the first volume of DVDs had the game Revolution, Volume 2 included Special Delivery, and then Volume 3 includes Hunting for Treasure. And at this point in the DVD, in the TV series, or the, the third volume of DVDs, uh, at that point, World War I has ended and the, in the young Indiana Jones goes on one final kind of classic Indiana Jones adventure. Because a lot of the TV series, you know, it's not really adventure focused. It's, it's Indiana Jones meaning famous historical figures fighting in a war. You know, it, it was stuff that you really, that it's unlike the movies. The movies are very adventure focused. Most of the TV series is, uh, is not. Like one episode is just him hanging around in Paris with like Picasso and artists. So it's more dramatic than adventure focused. But, but yeah, this, this third, uh, this one episode or this one couple of episodes sees Indiana Jones and his buddy travel to the South Pacific, uh, and they have a and they have like old school like treasure hunt adventure there. So let's fire that up and hop in. Uh, and yeah, again, like like the previous two PC games that we checked out, or I checked out, the it's all made in Flash. So this all is is vector based graphics, and it's all very Flash like. It, it looks like a Flash game, right? <laughs> right. Uh, released in two thousand eight, as you can see here, which. Uh, I discussed this before. I'm pretty sure Flash wasn't dead by then, but it was definitely on its way out in terms of popularity as a development uh, platform for animation. Like, I think it remained popular for animation, less so for game development. But they, here we go. In 2008, they were still making a few at least. So let's, let's dive on in. Uh, let's make a new player for this playthrough. Let's call this one... Uh, Tress, because this is the third playthrough and the final playthrough. All right, so yeah, there's a little intro for us about uh, what's going on. So like I said, World War One is about to end. And just as it's about to end, Remy, uh, Indiana Jones and his buddy Remy uh, have a strange encounter. So here they are on the battlefield. They have to go after some guy named Rohinder Singh. And this, this guy in charge is uh, not believing them, it seems. And now you can see Singh is out on the battlefield meeting up with some German guy. And uh, betrayal. The German guy shoots him. And then Indiana Jones is trying to prevent uh, further murder. But uh, the German gets away. And now they're going to search Singh's body and see what's up. Hey, look! It looks like a map! <laughs> ancient Greek. This can't be what he's looking for. The eye of the peacock. You must stop him. Stop him. The eye of the peacock. That makes sense. But I guess if you're about to die, you look for some keywords to, to say. Oh, but they're getting shot up by more Germans. And right away, we're put into one of these uh, 
shooting sequences that I'm not a fan of. <laughs> because uh, the first game, Revolution, these were pretty easy to play through. But then by the second game, um, Special Delivery, they get really tough. Like, because you, you, you can you can see here, you can only take three hits and then you're you're down. So, uh, and their their aim gets very good. So it gets a lot more challenging to complete the sequences, which I will demonstrate here. Oh, I got shot once, but I took him out, at least. Oh, all right, that's pretty good. All right, there's two more. I just wanted to get a bead on where he is. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't get shot though, that's good. Jeez. As soon as I turn to this guy, the other one's gonna pop up. Oh, I took two hits. I can only take one more and then I'm out. Let's see if I can recover. Somewhere right there. Oh! I think I got two hits. Hey, we did it. I mean, I still took two damage, but we, we got through at least. And there you go. So they're, they're on... So that's where World War One ends, which is pretty significant in the TV series. Like World War I uh, is just a very significant portion of uh, what Indiana Jones goes through in this TV series. Because he, you know, he, he starts off in the Mexican Revolution and then he joins his buddy Remy to travel to Europe and fight in World War I. And they end up going through, you know, England, France, Germany, Belgium, um, Africa. There, there's a whole, I think they start off in Europe, then they go to Africa, and then they go back to Europe. Uh, and then that's when World War I ends for them. And it's pretty gnarly. Like the war sequences in this TV series are not, they don't mess around. They're high production value and they're very violent. They're pretty violent. For a TV series that I think is supposed to be for kids as well as older viewers. So, um, but hey, I, I commend them for committing. When was the armistice signed with Germany? And look at that. Remy is suddenly wearing his adventurer outfit and mustache, but that's fine. All right, here we get to the trivia portion of this game where they ask you questions and you answer it based on what you read. So, something about an armistice. Here it is. They signed the armistice at 5 a.m. on November 11th. It's 11 a.m. now. It must have gone into effect early this morning. But lucky for us, we found this treasure map. It shows the way to the peacock's eye. No kid. Above the tomb of Lycomedes, the horses will show you the way to Alexander's greatest triumph. So, uh, again, just straight up classic adventure story. They found the map. The map has a clue they have to follow. It, and I think that was the intent, right? This was like, I think they intended to make this as like a feature length story that's more reminiscent of like the Indiana Jones movies versus what they'd been doing with the TV show up to that point. That's what the soldier said. This could be our ticket to wealth beyond our dreams. Yeah, it could be nothing. I don't think so. Indy, you're my best friend. Let's do it together. One last adventure. All right, well, there you go. We're going to have one last adventure with Remy. Uh, and that is the case. I think this is the last, this adventure is the last time Remy appears in the TV show. Uh, and I don't know if, I mean, obviously there are novels and things that take place later, but yeah, I, I don't know if Remy ever shows up again. And then we get a little note about how Remy, when you met, when he meets Remy in Mexico, Remy had already been married to uh, someone in Mexico and she died. And that's why he was fighting in the revolution because his wife got killed. But now you're learning that bef apparently before he sailed to Mexico, he had married someone else, had kids, 
and then he went to Mexico, and then he came here. <laughs> and finally here, he gets reunited uh, after almost never seeing his wife and kids. Uh, in London, apparently. And here they're talking about how the heck are we going to find this treasure? You don't have the money to get a treasure hunting. Indeed. This was my grandmother's. Sell it so that you too can find our fortune. Suzette has faith in us. Aren't I a lucky man? Yeah, again, she's, she's very understanding. Dude bailed on his family for years, and now they're back together, and now he's going to leave again. But uh, Indy's in, so I guess we're doing this. So yeah, here goes the other aspect of the gameplay, of course, which is the survival part. So, yeah, the player is expected to just stock up on a ton of supplies. And the key thing, and it's kind of like Oregon Trail, the main thing is to keep up your food, and your water. Uh, if you run out of, and health, health, like I'm shown in the bottom right here. If you run out of those three things, uh, you're dead. Uh, and sometimes, it won't, even, it, it won't even tell you why you died. You'll be on, in the middle of a journey, and it'll just stop and present the error, the message that says, oh, you're dead, try again. So uh, it's a bit weird, it's a bit weird how that, how challenging the gameplay can get. For something that's meant to be, I think in an accessible, like, you know, edutainment experience, where you're educating and entertaining. Anyway, let's take all this stuff and go. Uh, but then before we leave, there's a chance to stop at the shop and stock up. So let's see what we have. We have five items here, 10, ten items. We already have 13 items. The limit is 14. So I, I'm already almost at the limit. The most important things, like I said, are water and food. We have a ton of food, though. All right, let's see. Oh, lame. They don't show you your food in the, in the store menu. Let's, all right, let's see here. We have one, two, three, four, four food items. So four is more than enough. So I'm going to buy one water and I think that's it. Let's make sure though. Hold on. Um, can I look up anything about food supplies? Uh, so this is the guidebook. I'm just going to, I'm hoping to find information about food and what I'm supposed to do, but, or I mean, I know what to do. I was just hoping there'd be a little more info here, but there's not. Uh, here we have a diary. Uh, here he talks about Miss Seymour, who is a character we haven't met in the games because that was a, a woman he spent time with as a child, which does show up in the Volume 1 episodes when he's a kid. Oh, you know what, though? I forgot that I already lost some health, so we're going to burn a couple of food items now. Just to make sure we're full health. And now that means I need to buy two more food items. Alright, I think that's it. Yeah, let's go. I, I said let's go. Oh, here it is. Here's Remy making a promise that uh, I hope he can keep. Indy, do you know what they call the city of Alexandria? Oh, let's find out. Alexandria, where are you? It is known as the Queen of the Mediterranean. Yes, and we will find her treasure. Do you know how long Alexandria was the cultural and economic center of the ancient world? Jeez, a million questions over here. It was the center of the ancient world for 900 years. Yes, maybe that was Alexander's greatest accomplishment, founding Alexandria. Maybe. Go from like a daytime. 
There will be room for the children to play. A garden. We'll buy a car. Imagine me, Indy, with my own car. Well, don't forget, Remy, this is a big gamble, and we could lose. I feel lucky tonight. Remy, don't go and gamble away all our travel money, all right? Have faith, my friend. Yeah, so Remy is a womanizer, he's a gambler, stand-up guy. Um, uh, I will play one game of blackjack just to show you, uh, which is included with every, every one of these PC games. They have blackjack as a minigame. <sighs> and I lost. So there you go, I lost 50 cents. That's what happens when you gamble. You inevitably lose. But we just found five bucks uh, as we crossed the ocean. That's great. Emery Jones Jr. Is that you? Hey, Howard Carter. I say it's been ten years. I almost didn't recognize you. So there you go. That, that's someone else that uh, was introduced in the kid in the episodes. And he runs into him again later on, uh, as shown here. When you were a boy, you were quite helpful. I could use some of that help now to look for King Tut's tomb. What sort of business? I thought you wanted to become an archaeologist. Good, good. Well, what brings you to this part of the world? Doing some research, man. Alexander the Great. My friend E.M. Foster might be able to help you. He's writing a book on Alexandria. In fact, he's right here on the ship. There is a more romanticized view, but I don't think Alexander's greatest triumph was his thirst for conquest. I'd like to think it was more noble. Do you know how he united conquered kingdoms with his own? Oh, I gotta look this up. Uh, yeah, what, what did Alexander the Great do? He combined the Greek and Persian cultures. Yes, he encouraged marriage between his army and foreigners, and even practiced it himself. Okay, I, thank you, I guess. Uh, I have a light bulb that I don't need. So let's buy, let's get something else from from this guy. Uh, I think I have a lot of food already. I'm just trying to think. A medical kit's really expensive, let's do it. Great poker game going on in there. Stakes a bit too high for me though. Now we're meeting uh, E.M. Forster, who I'm not as familiar with. Pleasure, E.M. Forster. Some of us dig in dirt, some like to dig into men's souls. Whoa, heavy. I would consider it his vision to conquer the entire Persian Empire and spread Hellenic thought. Well, there's uniting Greece, or crossing the desert to Susa, or cutting the Guardian Knot. Or there's discovering the Siwa Oasis and being acknowledged as the son of Yaman Arar. I'm sorry, how did you pronounce that? Yaman Arar? It says Amun Ra. Do you know what the word Yamana meant to the Egyptian people? All right. Is the is the Y silent? I don't know what's going on here. Oh, uh, yeah. What, what does that mean? Let's look it up. Uh, is that something I can look up directly? It doesn't seem like it. All right. Here's E.M. Forster. Nothing about Yamana Ra in his article. What else do we have? Uh, nothing, nothing there either. Where else can I click? Maybe in Egypt? Oh, here we go. It means the hidden one. Yes, that's right. And since air and wind is hidden or invisible, he became a god of air. And thus wind, then later, breath of life. Eventually he became the most important sun god, or Yamana Ra. Once Alexander was pronounced his divine son, he referred to him as his true father. All right, this actor's doing some weird pronunciation stuff. First he said Alexander, then he said he's saying Yamanara. I do not like it. Indy, where have you been? There is money to be won tonight. Man, I'm, I'm getting clues. What do you think? What is it, Indy? 
Yes, so? Indy, that has to be his greatest triumph. So Alexander the Great's greatest triumph is uh, becoming a god. It's a long sea voyage. Which, uh, they've sped those up, thankfully. Like, in, in the first game, Revolution, uh, which is part of the Volume 1 DVD set, those little travel segments are so, are so slow. And it might be because it's a different scale. Like, it's just traveling with a small part of Mexico, so they, they have to slow it down. Whereas here, we're trying to cross, you know, an entire sea, so it takes more time, I guess. So they've arrived in Alexandria and immediately they're getting accosted by some goons. And hey, look at that. It's the German eye patch guy. And he's being a jerk. But hey, Indy and Remy, they, they, they've been in a, scra a scrape or two, so they fought their way out of it. Yep, eye patch. It's the same dude. What page? Bridget. Steamship timetable. He couldn't be more than an hour in front of us. The one-eyed man you described left on SS Van Diemen half an hour ago. Heading east, final destination, Java. Uh, does it come into port anywhere between here and Java? Port Said, Suez, Bombay. When's the next boat? Seven days. We can't wait that long. Where's the train station? Garabi al Salim. Wow, this guy's just giving away that his customer's information, like whatever. I'll tell you all about this guy and where he bought his ticket and where he's headed. I was bit by a rat. Oh no. I think I have two medical kits, so let's use one of them. Come quick. There's someone on this train you should meet. Okay. He is curator of a museum back in London, and an expert on antiquities of Alexander the Great. Sure. He's up just a few cars. I told your friend I probably can't be of much help. Stories dealing with antiquities from Alexandria are vague. Are vague? Okay. Oh, it's a miracle we know anything about Alexander's conquests. He had no Homer to record them, and certainly his generals were too busy fighting to record the spoils of war in great detail. Did he ever bring back a peacock? In ancient days, peacocks were often exported as treasure. It's quite possible. Well, why didn't you say so? Of course. There was a statue of pure gold with two diamond eyes, each 140 carats. It must have been truly impressive. Naturally, it was destroyed shortly after his death. Of course. The story goes that one eye was sold to the emperor of India and subsequently cut up into smaller diamonds. The other was stolen. Well, okay. One more thing. I heard a rumor that there was a British colonel who found the stolen diamond. He was captured by monks and held in solitude for many years, but eventually smuggled out a map. Poppycock, if you ask me. A map, you say? Hmm. A diamond? Do you know how much a carrot costs? A carrot. Well, let's look it up. A carrot is worth 450 bucks uh, in this time, in this period. Yes, and the more carrots there are, the higher the price per carrot. And what a story. Owned by Alexander the Great, the diamond is priceless. Oh, and we're, we're trading again. Well, let me see what else. Oh, I will give up my dinner jacket for sure. What do I, what do I need? Hold on. I have two water. I have three food. So let's get a water. Oh, now we're going into a bar. Let's go get something to eat. Think they're partners? Could complicate things. I'm hungry. She probably doesn't know anything. She's just a local bar girl. All right, well, we'll talk to her in a moment. 
Let's just go around the room and see what's what. Uh, these guys look intimidating, but if you click on them, they're just playing, uh, gambling. Tie. Uh, I'm gonna keep going until I win or lose. Yep, I lost. That's it. Well, oh, the bartender's a store or shop shopkeeper. But like I said, I already I know I have three food and three water. Uh, well, we'll check on that in a second. The air in here is too stifling. Money doesn't excuse bad manners. I'm an embarrassment to anyone who knows me. Now, why would you want me to sit with you? One can only take so much. That's Mr. Ku Wong. A girl I know made a joke at his expense and after the punchline found herself at the hospital. Jambi, the one with the turban, is a tobacco trader, very rich. The man licking his fingers is a diamond trader from the Netherlands. Gamlin is the traditional music of Java and Bali. Do you know what instruments make up an ensemble? Oh, we're looking up music from Java and Bali. Here we go. What do they use? They use drums, gongs, xylophones, and metallophones. Yes, and sometimes they add bamboo flutes, strings, or vocalists. It's very romantic. What is it? Oh, and now we have information from somewhere. Could it be Alexander and his troops? Might be a clue. Do you think they're onto us? Why would they want us to follow them? But it looks like they found the tombstone. The mountains are the same mountains. All right, so there we go. So we've checked in there. We're not ready to exit yet. We talked to her. Last thing to do is to check on our supplies and buy what's missing. One, two, that's five. Six, seven, eight, nine. I have 11, so I can buy three things. Uh, I have three food, three water. I, I don't have a medical kit, so let's buy that. So buy a medical kit. We have three food, three water. I'm just trying to think if I should leave room for anything else that I'll find on the way. I don't think so. I, actually, since I have so much cat, oh, they only let you buy one medical kit. That's lame. I guess we'll buy another healing herbs. We'll call it. Yeah. I'm full of health. That, that's it. Oh no, he got seasick. Let's use the medical kit. And let's use the medical kit again? Did I have two? I guess I did. All right, now what? Yeah, it looks like the eye patch German. What kind of temple oh. is this? So now we're in we're in Java. There's something about temples. Is there? Ah, oh, here it is. Temples. It looks like they are Buddhist or Hindu. So yeah, here it is. Yes, there are probably many ancient Buddhist and Hindu temples where our diamond could be hiding. I hope this is the right one. Hey, there we go. We got three temples and nothing else. Let's just pick one and go. There are three mountains. Three mountains, three temples. Hmm. It's so clear now. Since ancient times, diamonds were considered divine. Probably Alexander received the peacock's eye because he had become a god. In ancient India, diamonds were thought to be gifts from the gods. Since the earliest times, 
diamonds were used in the eyes of Hindu devotional statues. In India, a peacock is considered sacred. The island of Java is right in the middle of ancient sea trading routes and was probably influenced by Indian culture. And do you know what the Greeks believed? Uh, what they believed regarding diamonds. Now let's find out. Let's see. Greeks believed diamonds were tears from the gods. Right. So, all right, we already visited the right temple. Let's go to the left one. We found a beaded necklace. Uh, yes, we'll take it. Wait, what? Oh, it just replayed the same clip. So I guess don't go back there. Do I still have that necklace? Yeah, I do. Can I find another one? No. Oh my God. It's a diamond. We've got it. That looks like a box We've to me. Got it. Well, we're all wrapped up there. Hey, look who it is. I passed German once again. And apparently I'm running low on everything. Is that right? How much water? Two water, two food. That's enough. Uh, he's getting away, but he left the receipt. He's going to Singapore. And then one of these, uh, one of these jabronis has, uh, her stuff. Thank you. And there is Jambi. Maybe the three of them are written on it. Well, that won't make it any easier for us. Don't touch me! Leave me alone! Are you, are you, are you? Get your you hands off me! Get off! You're Get off! You seem like a girl who always seems to manage. Maybe I don't want to manage anymore. That's what got me kicked out of town. So wait, they took her money, but then they bought her a ticket to get her out of town. Huh. Don't be too long. I don't know what happened to me in the last year. I just seem to lose hope. I always thought everyone deserved a little happiness, but none of it seemed to come my way. I'm not sure they are now. Flirting with some random person? Come on, man. Maybe you can get an extra blanket? Oh, still running low on food. Uh, and you gotta be careful. You'll, again, Indiana, Indiana Jones will just die out of nowhere in the middle of these trips if the supplies is too low. What do we have now? We have... One and a half of each. And I don't know if anyone here is going to trade with me. Let's talk to Remy. Indy, you're not going to give food to that girl, are you? If you hadn't wasted all your time with her, you could have been searching their cabins. Good. I'll get them to join me at cards. Keep them busy. Okay, so he's just going to go deal with some distraction duty. Let's talk to her. Do you know what is the least expensive ticket on a steamship? Oh, uh, steamships. Is that a thing I can read about? No, not canoes. 
steerage was the cheapest. Yes, well, you really shouldn't be seen with me if you want to protect your reputation. Nope. Okay. Oh, hey, look at that. If you want to lose more money, you can do this. Uh, I'll play one hand. <gasps> Are you kidding? No, that's cheating. All right, let's go look at this room. being super loud. Wait a minute, let me explain. Whoa. He got killed. He got killed and now we're going into a shooting sequence. Gee, I wonder where one of them is. dead and he's dead all right doing pretty well they're not even trying look at that hey that was pretty good Are we, are we talking pirates? Yeah, we're talking pirates here. Try to stop me, Henry. I'm not losing that diamond. How did she even get the box? Zyke and me were supposed to be partners. We had an argument and he was gonna kill me. I had to defend myself. So she killed the eye patch, German. I have it somewhere no one can find it. But we have to get on that pirate ship. Maybe we can make a deal. Split it three ways. There's plenty for all of us. Our diamond is getting away. Partners, it's around your neck. Oh, how did she get the, the key? Anyway. There's no time to explain. That pirate ship is about to disappear. Oh, and of course they took the key. And more shooting. Wow. I guess if you're I guess if you're gonna introduce pirates, you might as well get some good action out of them. Wow, that, I wasn't getting shot at all and suddenly here I am, about to die. All right, I took one out. Uh, I, I cannot take any other hits. I should really be more careful than this. Right, we've got one here and one behind the curtain. shot. 
So, yeah, I took three hits there. I hope I get more supplies somewhere. Because I'm not doing great. Let's use a healing herb. Actually, that's not enough. Because if I get into another firefight... Oh, man, but I don't have that much food left for the trip. Yeah, let's not. Oof, that boat is done. We've got it. It's ours now. We're rich. Do I look rich? And get back to civilization, where we can spend our money. She made herself appear suddenly desperate, and yet all along she held something worth more than all the wealth in first class. What are the chances that pirates would pick the one steamship in all the ocean with a priceless diamond? How many boats could there be in the South China Sea? South China Sea... Looks like it is the second most used sea lane in the world. Well, they must do a brisk business. Indy, how many days can a man live without water? Hmm, I bet that has to do with dehydration. Three or four days. We better find some soon. All right, so we can risk cannibals or we can risk the longer route, which I am going to choose that. Because I think I have enough supplies to survive. Oh, that is too slow. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. We gotta restock. Do you think this island is inhabited? I don't know. There could be cannibals, headhunters. Let's hope they're the friendly kind of headhunter. Do you know what some tribes use instead of actual heads? Instead of actual heads. Uh, referring to cannibalism. Hmm. No, they don't really mention what they anything about that. Anything about that there. Let's back up and go to rituals, maybe? No, that doesn't look right. Um, what else do we have? Do we have headhunters? Ah, here we go, through the use of a coconut. Yes, it's a ritual activity, an initiation rite of manhood. If this island is inhabited, let's hope they do it with coconuts. True that. And now we get to meet the locals. Yuck. Yuck. Indy. What's going on? Huh? Maybe this is the day they become men, and we get baked in banana leaves. I hope you are right. Please, God, I don't want to be target practice. I smell roast pork. Do you think they have other plans for dinner than us? Uh, weren't we just reading about cannibalism and the fact that it is still practiced by some people? Yeah, yeah. so of these options, um, I'd say it is still practiced by tribes. I think we should make a break for it. Do not touch! Welcome to the Trobrian Islands. The Kiriwinians are your hosts. I'm Bronislav Malinowski. I'm studying these people. Who are you? Uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, we're traveled from Europe. We came by way of Java. An American. And a Belgian. Remy Bodor. Oof. Did you see that face? Again, I don't understand how they could have mangled some of these portraits so, so much when they made these illustrations, because you're just tracing over a screenshot of a video. Uh, here we go. We're meeting Bronislav Malinowski, famous uh, anthropologist. And if you want to read more about him, you can go to Wikipedia. 
So how do we get back to London? That's a good question. Uh, there's going to be a freighter. So Remy's hyped, but now they got to open that box. And since there's no locks there, they have no ways, they have no reason to want to open locks. So he's talking about the natives are into yams. Yams is like their diamond. They, yams in the rough. Ah, tools. All right, so we can trade for something. What do I need? I feel like, oh, can I get a little peek? I need water, most of all, maybe? Except water isn't an option. So I guess I'll take the yams, but what can I offer? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I have half food, half water. It's bad. I'm not willing to give up anything. Actually, you know what? No, I'll give up the healing herbs because I don't think I'll need them anymore. All right, so what do we got? So they open the box and it's a stone. Remy freaks out because they did, went through all that to get a stone and he did, he did promise his family he'd come back a rich man. So yeah, not very happy about it. But uh, hey, we're gonna keep busy with some deciphering. So I guess this is a, this is the stone. It has some writing on it. Let's go ahead and work through this thing. All right, so there's that one. H and then E. E Y E. So the I. The I is. And then this weird symbol isn't even there, so we'll skip it. And then there's another I. And then the N, and then the leg is a B, this weird twisty spiral isn't even there, and the L is the M, the arm is another B? Oh yeah, two Bs. The hawk is the letter A, and the I is the letter Y. The I, and this is probably going to be letter S, and this is going to be letter O. And that's it. London shops, theater, perfume, ladies in velvet. <laughs> I miss it. Yes, I lived there, published there, drank ginger beer. <laughs> ginger beer. I've had that stuff. It's, uh, it's okay. Not my... All, all those uh, non-alcoholic beers are kind of weird. Like malt beer, have you had that? It's a little... I guess it's an American. I, I think it, it's, it's not a flavor I'm used to. My fiancé. I read her letters over and over. Why am I here when she is there? More than home, hearth, family, the love of a woman. Yes. There we go. He's, he's, he's a passionate man. He does the work. Motivation is the key to understanding different cultures. Through understanding comes acceptance, and through acceptance, a peaceful world. They don't fight because they're enemies. They fight because the ghosts require it. If the ghost doesn't get it, he'll bring sickness, blights to crops, droughts, floods. Okay, I guess that's a logical reason to fight. There is a famous tradition in New Guinea culture to show respect for ancestor spirits. Do you know what it is? All right, showing respect for ancestor spirits. Uh, let's see if it's part of one of these things. Something about ancestor spirits. Hmm. No, that doesn't look right. What else? Here we go. So something about carvings of animals in wood. Uh, that's probably it. So wood carving. Yes. They carve plants or animals out of wood to represent their ancestors. These ancestors first arrived in New Guinea tens of thousands of years ago. They also paint and dress themselves in feathers and animal skins to represent birds, trees, and mountain spirits. The Colonians have a name for this colorful ritual you saw. 
So a ritual where they dress up in feathers and animal skins. Is that in here? No, that doesn't look right. What else? Also, there's a lot of stuff to read that has no bearing on... Like, nobody's gonna, nobody asked about martial arts, but you can read about that, I guess. So again, the, the, edu, edu, uh, the edutainment part of this game is definitely in there. But anyway, back to the task at hand about... Um, no, we already did this one, so that's not it. Hmm. No, not that. No, not that. Feathers and animal skins. Tell me if you see it. Huh. Uh, I am not seeing it. Feathers and animal skins. Feathers and animal skins. Oh, here it is. So it's called Sing Sing. Yes, and sometimes an important event is enacted, like a battle. Gifts are traded to enhance social status, and the giver has the higher status. Exchange is an important concept to the Colonians. This ceremony is called a Kula Ring. They sometimes travel thousands of miles around the islands to exchange shell armbands and necklaces. You probably already know the Colonian primary mode of transportation. I mean, uh, of all these options, yeah, I'm pretty sure what it is, but I'll look it up anyway. It's the canoes. Do -do 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 -do. Their chief uses sprigs of mint to help persuade the canoe to be swift. And steady. Are you going home soon? When I'm finished. The only time that's important here is that of energy. How much effort and energy does it take to make a garden? There are no buses to catch, no dinner parties to dress for, only the time necessary to complete the project. What project are you trying to complete? I want to document this culture so that it won't be lost uh, when it changes and uh, everything changes, no? Yeah, yeah, I guess it does. Banana compote. I make the best on the island. Excuse me, I'm tired. I mean, that sounds amazing to me. Uh, probably because I'm, I'm waiting for dinner at this point, but a banana compote would be, would be something. So they thought they found a diamond, but it was just a rock. Uh, and he was like, well, is, is a diamond good? But this guy is all about like, no, man, money is not what you need. You need to follow your dreams. And Indiana Jones wants to be an archaeologist. And here he kind of goes for the jugular. He's like, well, if you don't need the diamond to fulfill your dreams, what are you doing? Like, how long will you put off your dream of looking for this diamond that you do not need? So a little, uh, little lesson for all of us. I'm sorry, Indy. We must vow that wealth or the lack of it will never threaten our friendship. And now Indy has to come clean about the writing in the, on the stone. Why didn't you tell me? The diamond has our name on it. I know it. You had no right to tell him about the diamond. I know. What would someone who gave up everything to live in the middle of nowhere want with a diamond? Oh. What do you call someone who gives up everything to study men who treasure yams? Uh, I'm guessing that is anthropology. Right? You study people. Right. Well, where do we go next? Uh, this I agree with uh, quite a bit. Time is the only thing we have in the end. You, you give up your time to someone in exchange for money. You give your time to other people when you spend time with them. They give you their time. 
Uh, and then time is the only thing that uh, we run out of. And so it is pretty precious. So anyway, Indy comes clean. He knows where they have to go next. And Remy gets all worked up because he's like, all right, well, we can do it. But Indy, da da da, is not going to go. We are so close. When I close my eyes, I can feel it in my hands. Don't say this. You do not mean it. We make a great team. Why quit the partnership now? A friend doesn't quit halfway through. It does not stop. Not until we find what we are looking for. What do you think is the difference between archaeology and treasure hunting? Well, uh, archaeologists study past human cultures through the stuff they leave behind. So I would guess it's number one. Okay, but haven't we learned about history and human culture while searching for the diamond? That's a good point. It's been a strangely educational, if um, harrowing and violent journey. <laughs> so, you leave tomorrow. You two have reminded me of home, of people I should like to see. And so Remy will go to Bombay to look for the diamond? There are all kinds of ways of life in this world. One is not right, one is not wrong. I have a gift for you. Yams. Do you know what makes them valuable on long voyages? Oh, uh, let's go read about yams, I guess. So, this blows my mind. According to this article, yam tubers grow up to be, grow, they can be seven feet long, and they can weigh un, up to 150 pounds, and they last six months without refrigeration, which is, but that's bananas. And this cannot be the same yams that I think of, like from Thanksgiving. Like this, this must be some other kind of tuber or something, because this is, this is a seven foot long thing. It just sounds weird to me. Anyway, seven feet, 150 pounds. So there you go. That is true. But did you know they last for four to six months? Bring them with you to remember your time here. All right, well, this is where they split up. Good luck, Remy. I hope you find your diamond. Canoe, break through your sea passage, glide through peril, leave your imprint in the sand. Perhaps we'll meet again. I hope so. And that's the end of the story. Da -da 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 -da. So now we get some final bits about all the people we learned about. Alexander the Great uh, did a bunch of stuff by the time he was 25. So he was winning all the battles. Uh, he was a cruel leader. And he adopted traditions and his homies in Greece didn't like that. He died at 32. And then he, of course, right after he dies, everything gets split up. And uh, yeah, then the Romans take it all over anyway. He did found Alexandria, which is, again, as we learned, one of the centers of the ancient world. Howard Carter, who was, how long was he in this game? He was barely in it. We met him on a boat. Uh, yeah, he, famous archaeologist, worked in Egypt. He found the tomb of Tutankhamun. I guess that's the thing he is known for the most. Uh, this was interesting, that the season when he found Tutankhamun was his final season. They were going to cut off his funding at that point. But then he made the discovery, and of course, at that point, you just give him all the money. It took them 10 years to register the, everything. Jeez. Bronislav Manilovsky, uh, important anthropologist, studied human cultures. What was his thing, though? He had a thing. Yeah, his thing was, I think, living with the communities he studied. 
So he toured the world as a visiting professor. He taught at the School of Economics for 30 years. Uh, he was in America during World War II and he decided to just hang out here and stick to Yale until he died in 1942. But he contributed a lot to humanity. Uh, and yeah, based on the interactions of the game, he seemed like a stand-up dude. And now we're going back to the very beginning. So this thing's kind of out of order, but yeah, the armistice was signed, World War I ended. Woodrow Wilson helped to broker that agreement. It went into effect on 11 a.m. on the 11th of November, 11, 11, 11. It was signed next year in Versailles, France. The Germans lost a whole lot and uh, well, yeah, would later be real annoyed about that and they'd want to take it all back. 10 million dead, 20 million injured. Jeez. And it did not end all wars. So now the 11th hour of the 11th day of the, of the 11th month is remembered uh, apparently for all conflicts as a day of like armistice and peace, I hope. Uh, there, 19 out of 20. I think I know which one I messed up. Uh, hold on. For, first, let's look at the bonuses. The temple scene, the boat blowing up, and then <clears throat> them fighting some dudes. <clears throat> uh, and then let's see the cards we got. Yeah, that's... And again, each card is granted for each trivia question that you answer uh, correctly. And I think this last card was the one about the, the yams. Because I answered 150 pounds, but I think he wanted the answer about the refrigeration, so... I would assume this would have been a yams card if I'd gotten it, but I didn't. Oh well. And that's it. That is the final, that is the third of three PC games released along with the DVD set uh, pictured up there. And yeah, I don't know, like playing them back to back the way I did, I, I think they're not as interesting, but... Maybe if you were, I don't know, a fan of Young Indiana Jones at the time and you had to buy like a DVD set and you have to wait six to, you know, ten months or whatever for the next one and the next one, you have these gaps between each game and you have to, so you play this one, you play one of them, then you, you know, take a long break and then you play the next one. So, I don't know, maybe they were more interesting to play that way, but playing them all in a row, it's just, uh, well, I mean... It's kind of like reading a history book <laughs> or several history books about different events. So yeah, LucasArts produced the title, but the, the main developers were Riverdeep. Riverdeep, I think, was the like story development or instructional development. So they kind of maybe oversaw the project and, and how it's put together. Uh, here goes their special thanks. Uh, but then, yeah, here we go. I think Asylum Entertainment was the main developer. So I, I believe this was a team that did the, like, the programming and or the scripting and the art and everything. There goes a wink from Bronislav Malinowski. Malinowski, a little. Developers, I think, means programmers. Although, I don't know, scripter, coder, coder. Whatever it, mean, whatever it is to work in Flash Action Script. Here you get some other roles, some writers. And I think the same, I think the names are generally the same between the three games. And then final scene with Remy and Indy. Uh, and yeah, again, this is their final, he, you know, like Remy's gone after this. Indy goes on to have, uh, after this point, Indy goes back to the U.S., at that point, he goes back to his home in New York, then he goes to Chicago, and then he goes to Hollywood. And I believe that's, that's the end of the series. So the, the series ends with him spending a few bit more time in, in the U.S., and then that's it. Uh, but that is it. That is it for everything. I played all the games. I, I watched the TV series, which is why I knew so, how I knew so much about these, these things. Uh, and uh, okay, I guess all in all, I'm glad to have played these. Um, because, yeah, Young Indiana Jones for me was a TV series I wanted to watch when it was airing 
on ABC back on television at the time, but I didn't get to because of, you know, them all parents and sleep, uh, or, uh, what's the term anyway, uh, bedtimes there you go. <laughs> because of bedtimes, I couldn't, I couldn't watch it back then, but I watched it all on YouTube now and it's great. And then I bought the DVDs, uh, and maybe I'll watch those someday, but for now I'm happy to have watched it all and played all these games. And that's it for the, that's it for this series. So at this point I'll, I'll wrap it all up with like a summary video or a, a brief history video. And then I'll, I'll think about what's next on the old licensed game horizon. Uh, but anyway, until the next time, uh, I'll see you.